I'm Ellen Arnold, a volunteer at the Link Museum. I've been volunteering here since it opened 10 years ago. I met Mr. Link in 1987 when he published his first book, Steam, Steel, and Stars. So I was volunteering at the Transportation Museum, and we would have book signings there for him and had an exhibit. And I got asked to help with the book signings. I would get the posters out of the tubes and hold them out and listen to him as he talked with the people who came by. Mm -hmm. You know, and somebody would say, oh, my father was in that uh, thing. Oh, yes, I remember. And he would finish out the story. He had such an amazing memory of his many photographs and the people that he encountered during the NNW project. In January of 2014, the Link Museum celebrated 10 years of operation with an exhibit of 20 of his commercial photographs and a reception. Then we realized Mr. Link was born 100 years ago in 1914. So we decided to create another exhibit to celebrate. I had been working in the Link Museum archives for eight years. So the director, Mike Meneal, asked me to create an exhibit to commemorate the uh, occasion. The exhibit was titled The First Century of O. Winston Link and contains many of the items and artifacts which are in our archives. It opened November the 15th, 2014 and stayed through August of 2015. This film will take you on a tour of the exhibit. In 1936, Winston Link made a photograph of a Brooklyn Polytechnic Institute professor illustrating a problem of engineering a structure. Mr. Link wrote on the back of it, this is how I think when planning a photograph, the whole thing in accurate detail. And of course that is uh, Winston Link as he graduated from college in 1937. He was, I think, 22 years old. Ogle Winston Link was born December the 15th, 1914. His parents gave him some family names and arranged them so his initials would be O-W-L. He used the L to identify his words, his work, and created several different versions of it. O. Winston Link was a commercial photographer from Brooklyn, New York. He is best known for his night photographs of the North and Western Railway, steam trains in their surroundings during the late 50s. Link began his commercial work in 1937 as a photographer for a public relations firm in New York City. In 1946, he established his own commercial photography business. The Link Museum recently acquired over 2,000 negatives of his commercial and personal photography. He photographed the building of bridges, construction of highways, industries of many kinds, workers in laboratories, products that appeared in magazine ads, launching of ships, and many other commercial clients. The photos were listed with a two-letter code in order to identify each of his 100 92 clients and subjects. These photographs were selected from this group and most of them have never been printed before. The Verrazano Narrow Bridge was the longest suspension bridge in the world at the time it was built in 1964. Total length was 13,100 feet. The width was 103 feet and had 12 traffic lanes. There were four main steel cables with a diameter of 35 and 7 eighths inches with 26,108 steel wires per cable. Some of the steel was fabricated in Roanoke, Virginia. Between December 1963 and November 1964, Mr. Link took spectacular photographs of the construction of the bridge. This was a personal project encouraged by the Triborough and Tunnel Authority, now MPTA Bridges and Tunnels. And then that involved into a commission from the agency. So over the next four years, Link produced hundreds of dramatic color and black and white photographs of the bridges and facilities 
operated by the bridges and tunnels, as well as the panoramic scenes of New York City skylines and harbors. New York Transit Museum had an exhibition of Lynx photography of the Norfolk and Western and photographs from the MTA Bridges and Tunnels Special Archives at Grand Central Terminal. It opened in May of 2000 and stayed through September 2000. So this wall displays a lot of special items that are in our archives. The poster from the grand opening of the museum in 2004 and snapshots of festivities with Tom Garver, Bob Goodlett, U.S. Senator from the area. Oh, Bob, uh, Tom Garver was a curator for this museum, so he's a very special person here. David Helmer, who helped head the drive among business people of Roanoke to establish a museum for Mr. Lynx, NAW photographs, and other things related to the project. And a proclamation from the General Assembly of uh, the State of Virginia, and happy days at successful events with the signings and talking with admirers in 1996 and 97. Some candid photos of Mr. Link with his granddaughter when she was very young. And a handsome 22-year-old photographer that he, he made a self-portrait on his first commercial assignment in Louisiana. And a delightful photograph of Mr. and Mrs. O. Winston Link in 1941. The Link family seal with the, the motto you are one. Several photos from Albert Link's family album shows Winston as he was growing up. And the poster from the movie October Skies, in which he had a part as the engineer of a locomotive. Link's first museum exhibit of his photographs was in Akron, Ohio in April 1983 with about oh, 50 images. It was shown in about 12 different venues over the next two years. In June of 1983, another exhibit of his photographs opened in London and went to 12 different venues there. He also had an exhibit in Japan, Germany, during the next 17 years. This is only a sampling of the many museum and art galleries that had exhibits of his NW photographs. Each one might have chosen a different photograph to promote the exhibit. Mr. Link was on the cover of Preservation Magazine. He had made a photograph of the Green Cove uh, train station in 1957. And so in uh, 50 years later, 2007, we celebrated the, his making of that photograph. And his son was there to give the keynote speech. But this was done about uh, 1998, the, the photographs. So the Green Cove Station was given to the National Park Service for an information station on the Virginia Creeper Trail. And it is a very popular trail for all hiking, biking, and people who want to get away from everything. Winston always wanted to make a panoramic photo of one of Norfolk and Western's locomotives preferably a Class A. When he finally had the opportunity, it was with a Class S1A heavy switching locomotive. Making the photo was complicated because it was produced with multiple negatives. The photo of the S1A switcher number 261 and its crew was created on September the 7th, 1958. Using the rail in the bottom foreground, as a line to keep his 4x5 view camera perpendicular to the locomotive, Link moved from pilot to tender to make 14 photos of sections of the locomotives in tender. He then printed the photo and selected seven of them to cut out the images in the style of a jigsaw puzzle. A photograph was made of it to create a negative to be printed in various sizes. The gooseneck dam set up. This was the most difficult of all the NW negative photos that he conceived. 
it required six full days to set up and complete. The terrain on which he worked was especially rough and hazardous at night. To get the flash unit across the Mara River, he had to cross on a two-wire span, one for his feet and the higher one for his hands. There were no boats or bridges nearby. He had to carry the circuity and equipment to the West Bank. He came prepared with lanterns and a pup tent to provide some comfort while waiting for the train to come by. The finished photograph is on display in the Shenandoah Gallery. So this is the photo that Mr. Link, one of the photos that Mr. Link made during the setup for Gooseneck Dam. So he, he always photographed with two cameras. So he, he, one was vertical and one horizontal. So this was an example of where we had the two that were made exactly at the same time. But Mr. Link liked to photograph at, at night uh, because he could close out all the other uh, clutter and everything and just light up and show what he wanted. And he also liked to photograph in the fall of the year. For one thing, the leaves were gone, and another thing, it made the smoke from the steam engines more visible. So this photograph is from at the Luray Crossing. It has the time freight pounding through Luray, Virginia in the early morning of March 20th, 1957. It won first prize for the photographer Link in the professional class of 1957 Graphiflex International Contest. He used 36 flash bulbs and strung a third of a mile of wire to create the effect. What interested Link about the spot was a combination of objects and sounds that he found there. These included the crossing gates with lights flashing, the crossing watchman's shanty mounted high up on a steel column, the ringing of the bell on the locomotive, clanging of the crossing gates coming down, and the chug-chug of the locomotive. He made an interesting recording of the railroad sounds he heard here as Class Y-2157 passed through. So Mr. Bink made five 30, 30 and a third records, long play, with nothing but train sounds, and all of these are in the uh, Library of Congress uh, as pure train sounds in the 1950s. So this exhibit will be taken down and returned to our archives at the end of August, and Radford Gallery will again display Mr. Link's photographs of the Abington branch of the Norfolk and Western Railway.